Hello, my name is Zoe Whitley, and I'm here in Brussels for the Finissage Week of Rachel Elena Williams' exhibition, Joy and Rain. Um, she is an artist who has an international practice, but um, is based in New York City. Um, she was raised in Miami, and I, for one, feel that that palette that is particular to the city of Miami, a major art city, but a new one, and that has a particular vibrancy, um, really does come through in the work. Uh, for instance, if I think of someone who is also uh, a Miami native, um, like the playwright and screenwriter Terrell Alvin McCraney, I think that in that work, so often this kind of high saturation palette of uh, kind of candy colored pinks and oranges and purples really comes through along with these kind of sumptuous greens from the palm trees. And I think that it's an interesting starting point because for the artist herself, there is always a connection between text and how that's translated um, visually, both chromatically in terms of the palette she so much made her own, but also in terms of thinking about uh, a relationship to words, to the titles that she gives her paintings. And so thinking about someone like Terrell Alvin McCraney, who takes um, kind of life stories and turns those into colors and, and senses and a way of storytelling. I feel that that happens very much in Rachel Elena's work as well. In looking at Rachel Elena's practice, there's a really interesting approach to materials, um, how she sources them, how she manipulates them, and what ends up existing as both line and composition in and beyond the frame uh, on the wall. And we see that even in the ways in which the number of techniques that are employed uh, on each untreated canvas then start to um, play with our relationships to materials that might be recognizable, say a rope, but then it may be that she has unraveled it or rebraided it. Um, the way that raw materials like certain fabrics um, really expose their frayed edges. So we're constantly confronted with um, these little apertures and slits and openings and these variations in, in texture. And that creates uh, a real variety of tone and rhythm uh, across the canvas and across the composition. Equally, the way that she sometimes then inserts a kind of metal armature into uh, the rope line starts to create something that plays between rigidity and suppleness. And I think that adds an element that really um, invites further interrogation and invites the viewer to get much closer to the work and to understand what almost starts to look like a calligraphic pattern or a kind of a cursive motif that one can't quite make out legibly, but is there and is present in the work. So we're standing here in front of four of the artist's Tondo paintings, and the way the titles relate to various aspects of jazz music, and for me, invoke uh, quite a wonderful homage to Alice Coltrane, for instance, really starts to get at something important in the artist's practice and the very notion of making and how the works interrelate. Um, I see them very much like with the title of the exhibition, almost as, as raindrops and having this ripple effect. And so one same circular pattern, this kind of tondo shape, as it repeats, we see the infinite variations happening within it. Um, the, the ways in which these kind of denim tones of, of various blues um, can then give way from painted surface to a textile surface and then on to something that starts to relate to the lavenders, the way that's then picked up in the next pattern, almost like a ripple effect, you know, if you throw a stone into water. And what I'm really struck by is this interplay between the mathematical precision of the works and the ways in which um, these various strings that are nailed into this tondo frame then bisect and kind of cut up the, the circle in various segments, 
but then also how that's interrupted by these much more organic shapes that start to suggest flowers, um, these kind of knots and accretions and staples, and the way that we have these areas that um, are pure swathes of color, and then how that's interrupted by something that's um, much more cacophonous. But then as we kind of look at the whole, we see how this interplay of of stitching and of rope and of painted surface all starts to really speak a same visual language and how that's then uh, reinterpreted and there's a slightly different inflection or accent um, that each painting then takes on in the series. The exhibition title, Joy and Rain, comes through as a recurring motif of not only the water droplet, but also in how the spatters of paint are kind of manifest in a number of the works, kind of translating um, a very watery or aqueous paint, but then also these large drops. The title Joy and Rain may remind some people, certainly African-Americans of a certain generation of the Frankie Beverly and Mays song, Joy and Pain, um, because there are um, lyrics that then reference joy and pain, sunshine and rain. Um, but these raindrops here exist as three-dimensional forms um, and we see them recurring in a number of the paintings.